Okay. Um, the way that those came about uh, began from my experience of it and noticing that there were certain frequencies that I felt as though my parasympathetic nervous system turned on. And I was seeing it with patients that they would get more relaxed in certain frequencies. And I, I know that, you know, from other energy work that I've done and studied, that there are frequencies that um, may be more um, significant or, or um, kind of higher in the frequency priority for the change, the physical change that they make or the neurological change. So um, I started studying that and noticed that I think the paraspinal musculature is associated with the cerebellum and an association with the parasympathetic nervous system. So when someone does a, a dance roll down, or maybe a roll down is done in yoga also, um, but you put your chin to your chest and you roll one vertebra at a time down until your hands are towards the floor um, and your knees are straight. And then you come up with a slight knee bend and roll up, starting at the base of the spine, one vertebra at a time. And it became apparent that between the frequencies of 14 hertz and 17 hertz, um, that was the range that people had the best articulation of every spinal level. And the more I broke it down, and Andy changed the machine to go by one one hundredth of a, one tenth of a point. Um, we got to see precisely the frequency that opened every single vertebral level. So that was really significant to me because the anybody can see it when they do it. Um, so uh, that was kind of the starting point as far as understanding what ranges and what frequencies were um, impactful. So um, I've been working with frequencies since 1980, maybe even a little bit more than when I was still in chiropractic school. Um, it began with you know, what might be considered esoteric uh, use of hand modes to provoke or to activate different frequencies. And those frequency, those hand positions, each represented a different piece of information. Um, and so I started to observe consistencies with that. And over time, it evolved into the development of a microcurrent instrument that identified and would hold particular frequencies and it was mapped out the frequency of 403 muscles. So I've been using um, precise frequencies diagnostically for a lot of years. And um, that evolved into the, um, using percussive devices which are frequency and um, laser. So I was really anxious for laser to be FDA approved because my exposure to it over 25 years ago piqued my interest just beyond belief. And so with the approval of um, the laser by, FDA, by the FDA um, tapped into a, another um, frequency um, device to not only diagnose but but also to treat and that taps into your a doctor's own ability to perceive how energy moves through the body it becomes really obvious it's not there's nothing mysterious about it when a particular frequency is um, placed on the body um, you know, whether it's over organ systems or whatever, you can feel the body's receptivity to that and you can follow it um, through the body to related 
components, related organ systems, related muscles. So uh, working with frequency for that many years, uh, I think has really fine-tuned um, my diagnostic skills to be able to better interpret and analyze the, the value of these frequencies. So when I got on the Turbosonic and they had um, about six programs that were um, predetermined, um, it was really apparent where some of those frequencies were resonating in the body, not just mine, but I could actually see it on patients. So that was sort of the starting point to be um, the starting point to understanding what frequencies on the turbosonic had what impact on what muscles, tissues, organs, energy um, channels through the body.